Hello everybody, it's Austin James Jackson back with another weekly video covering Photoshop for landscape photographers, part of my course. Uh, we've got a whole series or playlist on here. If you haven't seen the videos prior to this and you need a little refresher, make sure to check out the whole playlist. We literally start from square one and work our way all the way through. We're getting more and more advanced with techniques every week until finally we'll do like a full editing walkthrough. Uh, in this week's video, we're going to be talking about dodging and burning. It's not something that I use a whole lot, but I do use it occasionally here and there to accentuate light in the scene. Really helpful when you have some sunlight hitting your scene or you want there to be a little bit more sunlight in your scene. But if you overuse it, it can get you in trouble pretty quickly um, if you don't know how to kind of harness its power. So I'm going to show you guys all of that in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump right into Photoshop. I've got three example images, three different kinds of images that will hopefully to help to show you. Um, just how helpful and how much variety you can do with this. Now, we've got this first photo. It's good. It hasn't really been edited. It's been lightly edited. Um, but let's say we wanted to accentuate the light. First of all, it's so dark in here. Um, and yes, we could bring that up with a luminosity mask like we talked about last week. But I'll show you how to do it with dodging and burning because I want to add a little bit of light in there. Um, and maybe I can make the sky a little bit better. Maybe I can add a little bit more contrast to these rocks right here. I can accentuate this light a little bit more. So a ton of options here. Now, what you want to do when you're dodging and burning, we're going to be doing it with a brush. Uh, yes, there is somewhere in here. There's like a dodge and burn tool. I don't know where it is. I don't really care because we're not going to use it. Um, but we're actually going to paint with a brush because we are going to use uh, potentially a little bit of color. You can certainly use black or white, but oftentimes it's nice to paint in a little color to your image. Now, the way you're going to do this is to create a new layer. And we've got two different blend modes that you can use. You can use overlay or you can use soft light, either blend mode. I know we haven't talked a lot about blend modes here on the course yet. Um, really the only ones that you need to understand is normal, which is what you're using on 99% of your layers. And if you're dodging and burning overlay or soft light is going to be the way to go. Now overlay is going to be what you want to use if you want to dodge and burn and maintain contrast. Soft light is going to be what you want to use if you're dodging and burning and you want to add a little bit of glow. Uh, generally if you're burning, so if you're darkening, you're never going to use soft light. It's always going to be overlay. But if you are using a brighter color, you can use either one. In this example, let's start with soft light first. Now I want to accentuate this golden light a little bit. So we will go in here with a brush. Now we could do white or we could select the color ourselves. I like to use the color picker tool to select a color from the scene to sample it. So the light color should be, you know, about in here or maybe even what this color is or similar. Now, I obviously don't want it to be that white, but what this is getting me is the correct hue on the slider here. Um, so I'm going to just increase the saturation. I'm still maintaining the same hue. Usually somewhere between like 10% and 40% is a good place to be. We'll go kind of right in the middle, maybe 20, 25%, about right there. And when I'm talking percentages, I mean the percent from the top left to the top right. Um, at the top, we're at the brightest color that we can be. It's going to be the absolute brightest. And we go from 0% saturation to 100. So when we go left to right, talk about percentages. Um, so this is about 25-ish percent right there. So click OK. Um, now you want to make sure your opacity is low. I like to keep the flow at 100, smoothing at 100. Um, I want my hardness to be 100, or sorry, I want my hardness to be zero. I want it to be super soft brush. And then you can decrease the size if you want. I'm going to leave the size big for now. I like to use my keyboard shortcuts to increase or decrease the size on the fly. So you'll see me do that a lot in this video. Those shortcuts are diagonal to the delete key. It's the closing and the opening bracket. The opening bracket makes it smaller. And then just to the right of the opening bracket is the closing bracket. It makes your brush bigger. Now we'll go in here. We can drop the opacity. Let's go, let's go 15 or so percent just to make it happen faster. This is the highest percent that I would ever use. Generally, I'm using more between 5 and 10% to make things work a little slower. Now you can start to paint this in just like that. You can see it's working in too fast. I might already think that it's too saturated. If it was, I would uh, just hit undo on that. I'd go back to my color and make it a little bit less saturated. Then I could go right back in and just paint here. Now I'm just clicking and dragging a couple times. Um, it's only going to put down 15% of the paint every time I click. So I can go back over here where the sun is at and maybe you can hear my mouse going crazy. I'm clicking a bunch of times. That's going to make it so it, it adds more brightness over here than it does over here, um, which is good because I want it to be brighter where the sun is at. 
Um, you could try overlay. If you wanted to add a little more contrast, you can see how big of a difference it is. Generally, you won't want to switch these after the fact. You're going to want to do that at the beginning. And of course, if you're thinking that it's coming in too strong, you can just reduce the opacity. Or if you paint it over in a spot where you didn't want to paint, you could either use the eraser tool or I would just recommend using a layer mask. We've already talked about layer masks. You just create one here and paint with black wherever you don't want it. That's how you would go about adding a little bit of light paint to your heart's desire, but do keep in mind that if there wasn't already light present, it's very hard to sell the look um, of light being there uh, realistically. Now I want to do another layer. I like to create a new layer for every different area that I'm hitting. And let's go with overlay because I want to keep the contrast. On this one, I actually just want to use white. And I'll do 15% opacity. I just want to click around on the mountains here. and Or not the mountains. I guess these are hills. Whatever you want to call them. Bring the brightness up. Yes, I could use a luminosity mask. That would totally work for this. But I'm just going to use this to show you kind of what you can do. If you're finding it's a little dark in here, I could make it smaller. Click and drag. Brighten that up. Click and drag, brighten that up, brighten that up. Luminosity mask probably is better for fine-tuned stuff like this, but it is an option to do just like we're doing it now. Now, if I want to add some color up here, we'll create a new uh, layer again. We'll go down to overlay. We're going to keep the contrast here. We'll hit the eye to get the eyedropper tool. Um, and we'll select the color. We want to keep this like orangish red right here, which is good. So we'll come in there. Maybe I want it to maybe be a little bit more orange. A lot of times I will adjust the hue, even though I am changing the color. But if I'm like, you know, I don't want this to come out red. It should be like more orangish, ye orangish yellow. It's a hard thing to say. So I'll drag that up. You can go about somewhere right in here. Grab my brush tool again, and then you can start painting. With For something like this, you'll want your brush to be a little bit smaller. And yes, you could totally pair this with a luminosity mask. That would be the smart thing to do. The freehand is only going to get you so far, because you'll notice like if I start to do this, I paint over the edge, um, and that's not really ideal. So ideally, you're going to use a luminosity mask or some kind of a selection tool, or a lot of times what I'll do is just paint in how I want. And then I'll go back in with a layer mask, uh, black, 100%. I'll increase the hardness just a little bit. Again, you want to make sure you're on black brush. Then I'll just zoom in, and I'll just kind of paint this out. Now, you can't really see it happening, but if I go like that, you'll be able to see it better. But this just paints out any spillage you might add if you uh, colored over the lines just by adding that layer mask on there. So you can see we added a little bit of light there. You could again, paint that to your heart's desire. Then let's say you wanted to go up into the clouds. This is where a good time to add some more saturation in your scene. Let's go and use overlay. Sample a color here. Uh, about in there. Maybe we'll add saturation. Now you can also use something in the middle if you don't want to adjust the uh, luminosity value. The way that overlay and soft light work, anything in the 50% gray will not show through. Anything that's uh, brighter than 50% will brighten, darker than 50% um, will darken the image. Uh, so if you were at 50% here, nothing would happen. This would darken, this would lighten. So imagine there's an imaginary line right here in the middle. So if you put your cursor about right in the middle, this is gonna add color, but it's not gonna adjust the luminosity. So if we did that, and in here, we'll adjust our brush back to what it was at before. 0% hardness, make the size a little bit bigger. Now I can paint in, and you can see it's painting in color, but it's not really adjusting luminosity. Now, this is a dangerous thing, folks. So don't go on your photos and start doing this. Uh, well, that actually looks kind of good. <laughs> but it can get really out of hand um, if you overpaint this. Because uh, things start to look a little unrealistic. Like this doesn't look right at this point. So use this tool in moderation. And a lot of times I would recommend either brightening or darkening. For example, I might brighten and then just go in with a finer detailed brush, a little bit smaller. That's way too bright. Let's drop the opacity back down to 10 or so. You know, and just hit some of these clouds up here, make it just a little bit brighter. Maybe hit a little stripe on the cloud here. Increase the brightness around that. 
And I'm obviously doing this very, very, very quickly. You will hopefully spend a little bit more time doing this, but just for the sake of the video, that's roughly the idea. You can see, and this was probably like six or seven minutes. I could have done this in two or three if I wasn't talking you through it. We went from this to this. So dodging and burning can do a lot in terms of shaping your image. I could have burned this rock down here in, uh, in lieu of like a vignette or anything like that. Let me show you another example. This one will be really brief. Uh, I'm going to use this to make this edge look a little bit um, stronger because this is an edge. This drops down. This is like a hill. It's not that big of a hill, but it's a little hill that drops down to that tree. This is flat on the top. So I want to just accentuate that a little bit. So we'll create a layer mask here. We're gonna use overlay. I'm gonna click this button right here to change it to black and white because I don't wanna paint color here. This is snow, so it really, like you could paint a little bit of blue, but you wouldn't wanna do a lot. Now let's do white first. We'll come in here and we may wanna increase the hardness. For something like this where you're painting on a hard edge, bring the hardness up to like 25% or so. And then, oh, and, and we want to do, uh, well, let's see, how do we want to do this? We could do either one on the top and either one on the bottom. Uh, realistically, if you think about the image, think about where the light's coming from. Clearly the light is coming, well, not clearly, but I know the light is coming from the right because it's hitting right here. So we'd want the bottom to be darker and the top, or the bottom to be lighter and the top to be darker. So we would want to paint white on the bottom here. And you'll notice it's coming in a little, bit too strong normally I drop the opacity a little bit lower instead though we can just drop the opacity right here maybe 40 percent and then we'll grab our black we'll do the same thing on the top maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger and I just I'm painting a little bit over here to just kind of taper it out so it's not such a hard transition before after before, after. You can see we've added just a little bit of depth to the foreground. Do the same thing to the clouds. Maybe we want to go in there with a black brush and that's probably too high of an opacity, maybe like 5%. Just click, create some dark, some darker areas in here. Um, and yes, this is like, oh, and sorry, you do want to be also, um, I forget all the time, you want to adjust the hardness back. You could see that it wasn't looking very realistic, but now it's 0% hardness, uh, especially with a low opacity. I can make this look a little realistic. So you can kind of add some depth and dimension to the clouds. You know, you can flip this over to white and then you can kind of click around, um, just make things pop a little bit more. Um, and again, I would spend a lot more time on this and make it look a lot better, but I just want to kind of show you the capabilities of what you can do, how you can shape the light. You know, maybe you come in here, increase, maybe add a little bit of fog or atmosphere just like this. You know, the possibilities are endless with what you can do. Uh, lastly, I'll show you one more thing that I like to do. I recommend this to a lot of people on my workshops. You've got a photo here. This is obviously a waterfall photo. You can make your waterfalls look more powerful and like they're kicking up more atmosphere by using this dodging and burning trick. On this waterfall, you can notice the water like kicks out to the right. It kind of looks like I'm, I have a straight on view of the waterfall in this photo, but actually I have a side view. So that's why the water is kicking out to the right and not the left. Also this rock. We can visually fix that though and make this look a little bit more symmetrical as well as make it look like uh, there's a little bit more water and it's a little more thrashing, make it a little more epic uh, for my buddy Dane Jackson here, professional kayaker. Uh, this is not me. People always ask if that's me. So create your layer mask here. And then for something like this, I like to do soft light because I'm adding a little bit of glow. I don't want contrast. I want the water to like glow. Open up your color picker and then select the color of the water, which you can see it goes back and forth with what color it actually is. So this is not that helpful of a tool. Basically, we want to be somewhere in the blue and then we want like 1% or less. Like we don't need to be all the way to the left, but we don't want to be very far to the right. Maybe like that. Realistically, it's not going to make that much of a difference at a low opacity. I'm going to work this in at 5%. Again, 0% hardness, adjust the size as you see fit. Let's actually work this in at like 15% so that you're not sitting here forever. We'll just click around just like that. Now you can see kind of before and after. So we've added a little bit more atmosphere. Then a lot of times on these waterfall images, I'll just use a really big uh, brush and I'll just like click and drag like this. 
Uh, that's more than I would usually do, but this kind of gives you the idea of what I'm doing here. It just kind of adds a little bit more like atmosphere to the image. Um, so this is something you'd want to do in moderation. I'd probably be more like more like that maybe, and I would maybe even use a layer mask and paint it out of this rock up here. Don't want it hitting the rock. Something like that feels a little bit more realistic to me. Um, and it helps to create a little bit more depth in my image by showing all this water that's kicking up. Uh, you could go in here up at the top of the waterfall and you can see there's like a, an upper deck waterfall. You could uh, do that up here. You know, you can even, if you wanted, just do it right over top of the waterfall, adding a little bit more haze and atmosphere. Just click and drag around. Something like that. So there's a lot of different applications for this. That's how I would do it on a waterfall image. So hopefully that helps you guys to understand dodging and burning. There's so much you can do with it. A lot of great tutorials online, both free and paid. If you want to learn more about dodging and burning, want to give you the just basic rundown because you can do so much with it, including on like Milky Way images I didn't even show. But if you are a night shooter, this works really nice to make that Milky Way pop. Um, and But it isn't something that I'm using on all of my images and it's usually not something I'm putting too much time into. However, there are a lot of photographers out there that will spend hours dodging and burning their images and just get some really fantastic results. So you can certainly spend as much or as little time as you want adding light or shaping the image or adjusting kind of how the light looks, how it hits the scene. Spend as much time or as little time as you want. It's certainly not a requirement by any means, but I know a lot of you guys will be asking um, how to go about dodging and burning. Hopefully that helps. Um, if it does, let me know down below in the comments. If it doesn't, let me know why down below in the comments. Let me know either way. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me a like. It helps me to continue to grow. I'm going to keep posting these Photoshop for landscape uh, photographer videos. So if you've liked them, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to keep posting them uh, over the next few weeks until we get to the very end and then you guys have a full understanding of Photoshop. Thank you guys so very much for being here. Hope you guys have a good one. This is Austin James Jackson and we'll see you guys next time.